Ah, Earth. Home. The third blue rock from the Sun. The only known planet where life can thrive. We have around 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% argon, water vapor, and carbon dioxide, give or take. The perfect balance to support our respiration. The troposphere is the lowest and densest part of Earth's atmosphere, 5 to 9 miles thick. It's the part of the atmosphere that keeps changing our weather. For any life to exist, we would need this atmosphere and the same combination of gases to breathe. If all the planets in our solar system were combined to become a mega-Earth, then humans wouldn't have evolved the way we are today, and we'd have a very different planet. If we take the landscape of Mars, we'll only have solid land without large bodies of water. Earth is the only planet in our solar system with bodies of water. One of the first wonders to see will be Olympus Mons, the largest volcano in the solar system. It towers Mount Everest by a long shot at 78,000 feet above the ground. Velus Marineris is a group of canyons that make the Grand Canyon in the U.S. feel like a mm, average one. This wonder stretches for almost 2,500 miles and goes more than 4 miles deep. On top of these epic terrains, there's plenty of other grand-scale locations on Mars that are way bigger than the ones on Earth. The planet might be as large as Jupiter. If the Earth were the size of a grape, then Jupiter would be the size of a basketball. We'd have the size of Jupiter and the rings of Saturn floating around us. The rings may seem like some large chunks of rock in the air, but they're actually ice particles and chunks of iced rocks. They range from the size of pebbles to car-sized ones. Saturn's rings are supported by the unique gravity in the region. With a lot of these ice rocks floating in the sky, there won't be much sunlight entering the planet, which means the planet will always be colder than usual. Not to mention the many moons it has. Our megaplanet could also have many moons circling above us, contributing to the tidal waves. Jupiter is known for the red spot, a place twice the size of Earth that has hurricane-like storms that have been going on for hundreds of years. The people of Mega-Earth will settle far away from it. Mercury is a planet but looks like the moon due to all the craters lying around. That's because of many asteroids and comets striking it over billions of years. But the landscape here mainly consists of mountains, highlands, cliffs, and valleys. The Caloris Basin is almost 1,000 miles wide. They believe it was formed by a comet. The deserts on Earth are mainly hot and consist of dunes of sand, but they also have flat plains and small hills. The largest desert in the world is the whole Antarctic continent. Mercury has no atmosphere to trap any heat, so it gets really hot when the sun is facing it and freezing cold when the planet turns away from it. On this combined mega-Earth, the deserts will most likely have a similar landscape to that of Mercury. The animals living here will probably be something like giant scorpions and desert snakes that soak in some sun during the day and go out hunting at night. But the soaring day temperatures would melt anyone walking. And even though Mercury is the closest planet to the sun, it's not the hottest. Venus has temperatures of nearly 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Scientists believe that the lands here are flat because of the extreme temperatures. But it's not all flat with some volcanoes and highland areas. We can probably find this terrain and climate near the equator, since it's always hot there. Humans can't live there unless they build special domes to sustain life. But since the planet is now huge, not all its territory needs to be populated. Some areas will have the proper atmosphere for breathing, but some places might not have such luxuries. Over at the poles, the climate will most likely mimic Pluto's, even though it's not technically a planet anymore. In 2006, they officially declared it a dwarf planet, and it's even smaller than the moon. There's not much known about this little mini floating rock, except that it's composed of around 70% rock and 30% ice. Scientists believe that a part of its surface is covered in frozen nitrogen, solid methane, and carbon dioxide. Since the megaplanet is huge, gravity might be quite strong here. Jupiter's gravity is enough to double your weight. Humans will most likely be really tall and mega-sized to match the big planet. Even the oceans will be huge. Our oceans will look like little lakes compared to what mega-Earth has in store for us. Humans need something close to 24 hours in a single day. 
our bodies adjusted to it quite well. But it wouldn't affect us too much if the day had a few extra hours or a few hours less. We can't live on any other planet without wearing the proper gear. We wouldn't last more than a few seconds in places like Jupiter, Neptune, and Saturn. It's possible to last as long as you can hold your breath on Mars. The atmosphere is thin and the gravity is similar to ours, but you might freeze. Even though it's a red planet, it's actually very cold and has ice caps in the poles covered with carbon dioxide. The same is true for Mercury. You can only last there as long as you can hold your breath and be in the sweet spot between the sunrise and the sunset. Ancient civilizations wouldn't have been as diverse as they were on Earth, since the extreme terrains and conditions wouldn't have allowed for discovery and training. But eventually, as humans develop special technologies for certain areas, different cultures would emerge. Many animals would also evolve in specific and unique ways. But because of the planet's enormous size, isolation, and being on top of the food chain would let certain animals be around since the beginning of the planet without evolving. So it's possible that this mega-Earth might have ancient dinosaurs roaming around, and they'd be even bigger than the ones on Earth. And even though there's a high chance that some humans might be physically different than each other, there might even be more than one species of humans living on opposite ends of the planet. Because of the isolation, they evolved in their own ways according to their surroundings. Over the centuries, technological advancements would spread different cultures around and we'd be more open to each other. Neanderthals and Homo sapiens once lived side by side and were considered as the two species of humans. Neanderthals were intelligent and used tools for hunting and drawing. Homo sapiens were survivors and wandered around to discover new land. There could be two dominant human species and other minor ones that live in certain areas on mega-Earth. They'd be bigger, tougher, and faster than us. The ones who live by the trees would have elongated limbs to stretch out and swing from tree to tree. The ones that live in savannas will probably run really fast and have long legs for that. Countries and cities will be bigger than what we have on regular Earth. A country can be as big as Earth itself. The human population can reach tens of billions. Special transportation technology might be invented for people to travel from one continent to another. Covering those distances can take months or even years if using regular aircraft. High-speed trains that travel so fast over land and rocket-like planes going through the sky. Traveling through oceans will require extremely sturdy ships. Traveling through the Atlantic Ocean is already scary for many, so imagine going on a voyage across a body of water that's potentially eight times the size of Earth. We're gonna need a bigger boat. There'll be areas to avoid, like the Red Spot with its perpetual storms raging on. But the tourist industry might have some room for anyone who wants to see it. Living on such a huge planet is unlikely going to become a reality for most of us anytime soon. But scientists are already discussing moving to other planets to find a new home for humans.